In the countryside of Britain, an independent lady named Bathsheba Everdeen used to live alone after her parents died. She was raised by her aunt, Mrs. Hurst, when she was orphaned. Being a woman did not hinder Bathsheba from doing manly chores. In fact, she manages her aunt's farm. Bathsheba knows how to ride a horse, and it is through it that she can roam around the vast area of Norcombe Hill. One time, Bathsheba passes the shrubs lying on the horse's back. Her scarf got stuck on some vines without her knowing. Good thing that Gabrielle Oak, a patient and reliable shepherd, saw it. Gabrielle attends the flock of sheep nearby, and every day, he sees the lady with her horse. The next day, Gabrielle waited for Bathsheba to pass by. He kept the scarf and intended to return it. After hours of waiting, a woman in a blue dress walked into the field. She was far away, but Gabrielle could still recognize her. It was Bathsheba. Gabrielle shouted and called the lady to come near. Without hesitation, the lady approached Gabrielle. A smile was painted on her face as she saw the shepherd holding the scarf she lost the other day. Gabrielle handed the scarf. Bathsheba thanked the man she called Farmer Oak. She enthusiastically introduced herself to Gabrielle. Gabrielle, on the other hand, is a man with few words. He didn't have that much to talk about aside from introducing himself. Bathsheba had already known him since then because of her aunt. Gabrielle just smiled and didn't respond. To break the silence, the lady jokingly said she apologized for trespassing his territory. There, Gabrielle replied that she was always welcome. And that's it. The surrounding became awkward, so Bathsheba just bid goodbye and left. From then on, Bathsheba looks at Gabriel from time to time as he attends to the shepherds. The two became close and talked about random things while doing farm routines. One day, Bathsheba and her aunt were busy trimming the shrubs in the garden, when they saw Gabriel walking in their direction. He was carrying a lamb with him. Bathsheba smiled and dashed to the house to fix herself. Mrs. Hurst let him in, so the man waited patiently for Bathsheba. Meanwhile, the lady was already done in the mirror. She sneaks out of the room, nervous and excited at the same time. Slowly, Bathsheba went to the living room smiling. Gabriel, on the other hand, looks glad to see the lady. He stood up to greet her. Without further delay, Mr. Oak handed Bathsheba the sheep he had brought. As Mrs. Hurst witnessed such a thoughtful gesture, she hurriedly went to the kitchen to prepare tea for the visitor. Just after Bathsheba's aunt left, Gabriel went near the lady and told her his real intention. Bathsheba looked at Mr. Oak to hear him out. The man kept looking around, bothered that Mrs. Hurst could hear him. Before Bathsheba's aunt could get near, Gabriel confessed a marriage proposal to the lady. Bathsheba looked at him and was extremely shocked. Mr. Oak continued and told the lady that it was his first time asking a woman to marry him. However, Bathsheba never thought twice and responded no. She felt that Gabriel was rushing. Hearing that, Gabriel's sparkling eyes turned lonely. His ego got hurt after being rejected. He immediately bid goodbye and left the house. He felt humiliated by a lady. Mr. Oak walked so fast without looking back. Bathsheba, on the other hand, got to her senses and realized how she had hurt the man. She felt guilt inside her and was bothered by it. Bathsheba decided to follow Gabriel to tell him something. Outside, Mr. Oak had already walked far. Bathsheba ran to get near him. She shouted to call his attention. Gabriel heard her and stopped walking. There, Bathsheba told the man that rejecting his proposal doesn't mean she wouldn't marry him. She reasoned out that she still needed more time to think about it. Gabriel was glad to hear that and became hopeful. To make Bathsheba more interested in accepting his proposal, he proudly recited all his properties which included 100 acres of land and a herd of 200 sheep. He also promised the lady he could buy her a piano if she wanted to. Bathsheba gasps for air as she hears the assets of Mr. Oak in case she would marry him. Seeing how her face looked delighted, Mr. Oak continued and added that he badly wanted to build a family with her, planning to have two kids. Bathsheba had a change of facial expression. She told the man that she didn't want a husband, to be a man's property. Bathsheba told Mr. Oak that she is willing to be a bride at a wedding but doesn't want a husband after. Listening to that, Gabrielle frankly told Bathsheba that her mindset was stupid. Insulted, the lady told the man to better get off from her and proudly told him she was more educated than him. Mr. Oak just smiled at the lady and bid goodbye. While Gabriel was soundly asleep, his dog woke him up. His untrainable sheepdog jumped into the sheep's fence and startled the animals. The herd of sheep was so afraid that they desperately wanted to move out from the fence. With that, the fence broke, and all of the sheep escaped. Gabriel hurriedly went outside with his rifle to see what was going on. The flock of sheep was gone. Gabriel ran as fast as he could and saw the sheep standing near the cliff. Some already jumped and got eliminated by the sharp rocks below. Gabriel shouted and went near them. But he was too late. All of the sheep fell off the cliff and died. Gabriel shed tears. His body became weak and trembled. He just sat on the ground, punching it hard, regretting everything he lost in just a snap. The next day, Mrs. Hurst received a letter and joyfully relayed its message to Bathsheba. The lady inherits her uncle's farm. This includes a large agricultural property and an old manor house. Delighted, Bathsheba was in tears, hugging her aunt tightly. The lady immediately packed up her things to live separately from her aunt. Meanwhile, Gabriel suffered so much after he lost his sheep. He also became jobless after that. He roamed to the city to find one. 
There, a fine wage was offered for the job of a queen's soldier. One of the recruiters saw his potential because of his manly figure, but Gabriel was not interested and returned to the countryside. It was early morning, and poor Gabriel started his day early to look for a job. A little while, he saw a commotion in a barn. The farmers rattled. Some ran away while others tried to put out the fire. Gabriel went in to help. He immediately led in putting out the fire. Mr. Oak targeted to save the barn from burning because the farmer's production is kept there. Seeing that a small part of the roof is still burning, he wet all his clothes and grabbed a ladder. He climbed to the roof with a tool to damage the roof and stop the fire. Gabriel successfully stopped the fire. Unexplainable happiness to help was felt by Mr. Oak after. After the adrenaline rush, Gabriel felt his body hurt. Regardless, he went to the sink to clean himself and his bruises. Morning came, and the farm owner arrived to check on the damages brought by the incident. She was Bathsheba. Bathsheba was looking for the heroic man who saved her farm. She was startled that a familiar guy was pointed by the farmer, Gabriel Oak. The lady expressed her gratitude toward Mr. Oak and offered him a job at the farm. She also told the man she felt sorry after hearing that he had lost all his sheep. Gabriel gladly agreed to her offer to work as a shepherd. Payday came, and Bathsheba led the distribution of her workers' wages. There, she fired Mr. Pennyways, who went missing during the fire incident. Bathsheba told the man that he was not useful anymore, because he was so irresponsible at times he was most needed. Mr. Pennyways is a loyal farmer of Bathsheba's uncle and was part of the farm's success. Gabriel was teary-eyed in the room as he witnessed how Bathsheba fired her employee. Gabriel knows the feeling of losing a job, and he deeply sympathizes with the farmer. On that same day, the heroic Mr. Oak was introduced to the employees, and Bathsheba introduced herself as a farm mistress. She also warned everyone never to belittle a woman like her taking charge. After orienting everyone to restore the partly burned farm, Bathsheba ordered them to continue working. All went well for Bathsheba after inheriting her uncle's farm. With her maid companion Liddy, Bathsheba confidently carries a small bag carrying a sample of harvested grain to a market. She was a head-turner at the event where buyers and sellers of grains met to trade. Minutes passed by, but no one went near Bathsheba's sample. Because of that, she called Farmer Stone's attention, a buyer of his uncle's grains when he was alive. Bathsheba introduced herself and greeted the man with kind words. It was effective, because Farmer Stone inspected her sample and got interested in purchasing it. With that, Bathsheba told the man that it cost five pounds. However, Farmer Stone bid for a lower price, which irritated Bathsheba. The lady ignored him and traded for other buyers for a reasonable price. The people there, including Farmer Stone, noticed how Bathsheba was intimidating even on her first time trading. She never let herself be fooled by the wise buyers around her. After being ignored, Farmer Stone immediately told the lady that he had already agreed with Bathsheba's price. Mr. Stone won the bidding and successfully bought Bathsheba's grains. At the church, Bathsheba glanced at a handsome bachelor, much older than her age. He is William Boldwood, famously recognized as a prosperous man. Liddy noticed her and told the lady how rich and handsome he was. Bathsheba got curious and eagerly listened to her maid companion. While talking about men, Bathsheba opened up to the lady that she once rejected a man who proposed to her, the man that she would instead like than love. The next day, Bathsheba was shooting a bird when William Boldwood approached her. He just lives in the neighborhood but was riding a horse. Bathsheba introduced herself as Farmer Everdeen's niece. They talked for a while. After that, the bachelor left, leaving Bathsheba smiling. Nearby the chimney, Liddy and Bathsheba were busy arranging papers. There, Liddy recited a corny Valentine's card to Bathsheba. The maiden teased the lady about sending one to Mr. Boldwood. The next day, while working in his office, Boldwood received a letter, but without a sender's name. It was a Valentine's card containing a famous love poem. While Bathsheba doesn't take love seriously, Fanny Robin, her uncle's previous employee, is about to marry the man she's madly in love with, Sergeant Francis Troy or Frank for short. The soldier arrived early at the church, waiting for his bride. Meanwhile, Ms. Robin walks in a gray dress with her hair crowned with beautiful flowers. All are set in the church, including the priest, but no bride appears. Troy tells the priest that he will wait until Fanny Robin arrives. The beautiful maiden finally arrived at the church. She opened the door but was shocked that another wedding was held in the church. Fanny Robin cried, thinking that the soldier had canceled their wedding. Meanwhile, in another church where Sergeant Troy bravely stood in his uniform, he felt tired as hours passed by, but no bride came. Troy shed tears, trembling as he leaves the church. The two misunderstood the exact church where the wedding would be held. In fine weather, everyone on Bathsheba's farm woke up early to start the day. They are working enthusiastically, especially Gabriel, the new shepherd of the farm. Bathsheba was there and saw Mr. Oak bathing the sheep. She smiles as she watches Gabriel teasing her co-workers. Bathsheba was in a good mood that Gabriel was able to invite her to join bathing the flock of sheep. The people cheered as they saw their boss mingling with them. Mr. Boldwood, who was just passing by, heard the joyful atmosphere at Bathsheba's farm. He went nearer and saw Bathsheba and her employees bathing the sheep. Mr. Boldwood smiled, admiring Ms. Everdeen's gestures. He requested Liddy to call her madam if he could talk to her for a second. Bathsheba went out of the water and spoke with Mr. Boldwood. 
Mr. Boldwood brought the lady to his property. He proudly told her he had 1,000 acres of land, an orchard, a glass house, and livestock. After that, Mr. Boldwood welcomed the lady inside his house. Bathsheba was amused and looked around. Meanwhile, Mr. Boldwood looked nervous, and Bathsheba noticed that. She looked at him, and the bachelor went near. Mr. Boldwood told Ms. Everdeen his intention to marry her. Like the previous proposal, Bathsheba declined. Mr. Boldwood didn't expect him to be rejected. He thought that Bathsheba was the one who sent the Valentine's card to him. Ms. Everdeen did not deny it but told the man she did not take it seriously when she sent it. The lady apologized to Mr. Boldwood. Regardless, the bachelor insisted and promised the lady that he would take care of her, give her a piano and everything she needed. Bathsheba sounded very independent as she told the man she had a piano and everything he offered. She doesn't need a husband, the lady added. Mr. Boldwood was dismayed and looked miserable. As Bathsheba noticed it, she told the man she would think again about his offer. Hearing that, Mr. Boldwood felt alive and told the lady he'd give her enough time. Bathsheba went home late. Bothered about Mr. Boldwood's proposal, she decides to walk around the barn before sleeping. There, she saw Gabriel, the shepherd, working overtime to sharpen a knife. She was glad as she saw him working passionately. She went in and tried sharpening the knives herself. Gabriel held her wrist to guide her, but Bathsheba removed it. Mr. Oak silently went back, knowing Bathsheba's rudely independent character. To break the silence, Bathsheba asked Gabriel if farmers had a say in Mr. Boldwood picking her up. The guy replied that they thought she'd be married before the year ended. Bathsheba laughed, flattered that her man wanted him to get married to the bachelor. There, Mr. Oak suspected that Mr. Boldwood had already proposed marriage to Bathsheba. Gabriel also told the lady if she wanted to hear his thoughts about Mr. Boldwood. Rude Bathsheba said to him that she didn't care about his opinion. Later on, she got curious and let the man speak. Gabriel told the lady that her Valentine's letter prank makes her sound unworthy to Mr. Boldwood. Hearing that, the lady went mad and recalled how she had rejected him. She shed tears after saying that, trembling with anger. The lady told Gabriel to leave at the end of the week. Mr. Oak agreed without thinking twice. He did not wait a week, and he resigned right after that. He banged the door and left. In the absence of a reliable shepherd, a severe problem took place. The flock of sheep had bloated stomachs. Hearing such scary news, Bathsheba rode on his horse and went to the field. An old farmer recommended puncturing the sheep's room and to release the gas. But there were hundreds of sheep, and they had to do it quickly, one by one. Bathsheba counted herself to help them. However, the man told the lady that such a case needed a skilled shepherd to execute because even trained ones make mistakes, eliminating a sheep instantly. Bathsheba's face looks worried. Gabriel already resigned last night because of her. Her pride is way beyond anyone, forcing her never to seek Gabriel's help. Bathsheba immediately thought of a plan. While leaving his work, Mr. Oak walks down a muddy path and doesn't know where to go. Suddenly, Bathsheba's man, Joseph, was running toward him. Bathsheba swallowed her pride to save her animals and sent Joseph to find Gabriel. Joseph told the man that Ms. Everdeen badly needed his help. At the farm, Bathsheba eagerly waited for Joseph and Gabriel to return. She felt alive as she hears horses getting near. Joseph came back. However, Gabriel was not with him. The man wants Ms. Everdeen to ask for his help personally. Through her horse, Bathsheba ran to Gabriel, setting aside her issue against him. Bathsheba finally saw Gabriel sitting under the tree. Her eyes were almost in tears as she pleaded with Gabriel for help. She even humbled herself by calling the man Mr. Oak. Gabriel, on the other hand, saw in her eyes that she was crying inside for help. It was his first time seeing the independent Everdeen needing his help. Gabriel's heart melted, and he rode the horse back to the farm to save the sheep. Gabriel treated first a ewe that was almost dying. He pierced its rumen with a tool. A sound of air puffing from the ewe's stomach was heard. But, there was no movement from the sheep. Gabriel pats its back, and suddenly, the ewe runs and becomes energetic like it used to. They even tried to capture it, but it ran wildly. Everyone, including Bathsheba, screamed with joy after. It was already dark when Gabriel finished treating the flock of sheep. At the foot of the hill, Bathsheba sat and was able to breathe after her animals bloated. She was smiling, and her gladness could be mirrored in her eyes. Gabriel went near to her. The two reconciled after. A celebration dinner follows after Gabriel saves Bathsheba's farm again. They prepared a feast of food and sang with all their heart. Everyone was all drunk when someone suddenly arrived. He is Mr. Boldwood. He joined the dinner, and everyone welcomed him. As the bachelor sat, the farmers requested Ms. Everdeen to sing. The lady refused at first but agreed later on. Bathsheba played her piano and sang a relaxing love song. Her workers were amused by her beautiful voice. Everyone is not familiar with the music. They just listened and swayed their head to the tune. A baritone voice was heard. He joined Ms. Everdeen in singing. Everyone looked around, searching who was in duet with their madam. It was the wealthy bachelor who proposed to Bathsheba, Mr. Boldwood. Gabriel stared at the man with jealousy. He was the sole man on the table who did not enjoy the performance. Ms. Everdeen accompanied Mr. Boldwood in going home. The two were also amused by their duo and couldn't stop giggling. Mr. Boldwood grabbed the chance to flirt with Bathsheba. The lady changed her mood and sounded independent as usual. 
The bachelor offered himself to accompany the lady back to her house. She reasoned that she must check around the farm before sleeping and that she could do it alone. Mr. Boldwood got pissed off with the lady's reply. Bathsheba walked around the dark shrubby area when she suddenly encountered an unfamiliar man. He was a soldier and their feet were entangled. He told the lady that he was lost and looking for Weatherbury. The soldier offered help, but Bathsheba didn't let him. The lady tried to untangle herself, so she placed the lamp between them. There, she got a close look at the soldier. The soldier is Sergeant Francis Troy. The same soldier engaged Fanny Robin. Sergeant Troy stared at the lady. Bathsheba, on the other hand, was so intimidated by the strange soldier. The guy smiled and admired the lady's beauty. Instead of flattered, Bathsheba trembled in fear, afraid the man would hurt her. At that moment, Bathsheba could untangle herself and requested the man to give her the lamp back. She also told the man that he was not supposed to enter her territory. The lady arrived home safely after. The next day, everyone prepared the hay to be collected to form ricks. Bathsheba saw a new face at the farm. She called Liddy to ask for the details of the worker she hired. There, Bathsheba knew that he was Sergeant Francis Troy, a similar man she had seen the night before. Bathsheba approached him and requested the man to get out of her farm. Sergeant Troy, on the other hand, smiled like a pervert and expressed his admiration for the lady. Instead of flattered, Bathsheba scolded the man that she had never felt interested in anyone and had not even kissed a guy. She insisted that he should leave the farm already. Sergeant Troy agreed but requested the lady to meet him tomorrow, 8 p.m., at the Hollow in Ferns. It will be a secret meeting if the lady agrees. The next day, Bathsheba was bothered by Troy's invitation. She didn't know why but she agreed to meet him. Maybe because she was flattered by his words, repeatedly saying that she looked different from other women. Bathsheba dressed and headed to the hollow in ferns in her purple dress. There, the soldier was awaiting her in his uniform. He was so happy to see Bathsheba appearing in their meeting place. Sergeant Troy approached the lady and asked if she trusted him that much to accept his invitation. Bathsheba nodded yes, so the soldier promised he wouldn't harm her if she didn't flinch. Indeed, the soldier did not hurt the lady but cut her hair. Bathsheba got mad. But Sergeant Troy went near to her. She couldn't move as she also liked him kissing her. The soldier stopped and walked away. Bathsheba, on the other hand, froze for a while, feeling satisfied. Even if it only lasted seconds, Bathsheba went home and couldn't stop smiling, recalling what Sergeant Troy did to her. Later that day, Bathsheba walks around the farm, where she meets Gabriel. He was so angry and without hesitation, warned the lady about Troy. Bathsheba did not listen to him and told the man that the soldier was decent. Gabriel continued and told the lady not to believe and listen to the soldier, and that it was better to stay away from him for good. Bathsheba went angry and asked the man his purpose for warning her never to go near a man. Gabriel told the lady he was wrong for assuming he had a chance with her, especially since she was richer than him. The man also told the lady not to worry because he would move away one day. With that, he requests that before he leaves, Bathsheba will give him a chance to at least protect her. Gabriel walked out. On that night, Bathsheba prepares herself to travel somewhere. Before she leaves, she writes a letter to Mr. Boldwood, telling the man that she has already thought for some time and decided to reject his marriage proposal. Bathsheba went to the city to meet someone. It was Sergeant Troy. She was so happy because she thought the man would not honor his word to wait for her. Bathsheba looked so much in love as her eyes sparkled towards the soldier. There, the soldier proposed to the lady, and for the first time, she replied yes. Even if it sounded rushed, Bathsheba fell for him. They even had romantic moments that night, and Bathsheba never thought about giving herself to him. At the farm, while Gabriel and everyone were busy, Sergeant Troy and Bathsheba arrived. They were riding a carriage. Gabriel got mad, assuming that the two were already engaged. A party at the farm took place where Bathsheba danced joyfully with Sergeant Troy. Gabriel joined the party late. The soldier announced to everyone that they were already married and that he would be the master of the farm. The crowd cheered for the newlywed while Gabriel went near his madam to tell her something. He now addresses her as Ms. Everdeen. Gabriel informed her that there was going to be a storm. Sergeant Troy interrupted, and the shepherd also informed him about the weather disturbance. Furthermore, Gabriel told them they needed at least six men to prepare the farm before the storm. They only have an hour to do that. Bathsheba got concerned, but Sergeant Troy assured her everything would be safe. Besides, they were currently celebrating their wedding, and all she needed to do was to enjoy. The soldier stared at Gabriel, insulting him. He belittled the shepherd's ability and told him it would never rain tonight. Gabriel just walked out and never talked back to the proud soldier who was only after Bathsheba's properties. Bathsheba did not also bother to go out and check her farm. She looks madly in love and obviously under the soldier's manipulative hands. Winds blew hard, and Gabriel was the sole man who was concerned about the ricks. He tried to do everything on his own without anyone's help. 
Meanwhile, Bathsheba got tired and went to bed. In her room, she saw Gabriel covering the ricks piled outside. Seeing that, the lady headed out to help him. The two climbed the ricks and helped each other cover them. Suddenly, lightning struck, and Bathsheba almost fell. There, Gabriel offered his hands and told the lady to hold them. Heavy rain poured down as how Gabriel anticipated. The two went under the roof to seek shelter. There, Bathsheba opened up about the time, when she hated maidens for instantly falling in love with the flattery words of men in scarlet uniforms. All her life, she never thought that she would be like one. She also confessed to Gabriel that Sergeant Troy mentioned a woman, a more beautiful woman than he loved before her. She felt jealous after knowing. Regardless, she still marries the soldier and realizes how foolish she is. To comfort her, Gabriel told the lady to just go to bed because he would take care of everything. Bathsheba wholeheartedly thanked Gabriel. The next day, Gabriel walked up first among everyone. He immediately proceeded to work like he used to. A little while, Gabriel noticed Mr. Boldwood standing from afar, watching him. There, Mr. Boldwood told Gabriel that he was also worried about Bathsheba's crops after the storm, but he was impressed that Gabriel protected them. Mr. Boldwood looks unwell, so Gabriel suggests him to go home. The bachelor stayed for a while and opened up to Gabriel about Bathsheba, promising her nothing and not saying a word to him for the last time. Mr. Boldwood was grieving that he could not control his tears shedding down. One day, the true colors of Sergeant Troy started to be noticed by Bathsheba. He was so childish and immature for his age. He even played with a sword next to Bathsheba's animals. Apart from that, he was also fond of gambling in the city. After losing cash, Troy finds Fanny Robin begging for money from the people. She was the lady he was supposed to marry. Sergeant Troy was happy founding the beautiful maiden who was pale at that time. Fanny, on the other hand, was mad at him for telling her the wrong church on their wedding day. Troy explained to the lady but saw Bathsheba coming. He requested Fanny to argue with her later because his wife might see them. Fanny looked at Mrs. Troy and told the soldier she was more beautiful than her. Sergeant Troy, on the other hand, disagreed and told the lady that she was more gorgeous than his wife. The maiden cried and confessed to the soldier that she was carrying his child. Troy was shocked. He instructed Fanny to go to Budmouth. He promised the lady that he would find her a home and make amends after making a mistake by marrying Bathsheba. As the two talked, Bathsheba already noticed that there might be something going on with them. Just before she decides to confront her husband, Troy angrily goes in her direction and pulls her to the carriage. Bathsheba could not do anything but follow Troy. The next day, pregnant Fanny Robin started her journey to Budmouth to meet Troy. She looked so pale, carrying a heavy bag on a steeping road she walked. At home, Sergeant Troy asked Bathsheba if she could lend 20 pounds to him. Bathsheba scolded the soldier for gambling and immediately thought he would use the money there. Sergeant Troy threatened his wife never to do anything that she might regret. The soldier walked out and banged the door. He proceeded to the bridge where he would be meeting Fanny. At the farm, a coffin with the dead body of Fanny Robin was brought by Bathsheba's men. Fanny Robin was Mr. Everdeen's servant, so instead of getting her remains to the church, Bathsheba told her men to bring her coffin inside her home. Their two candles were lit beside her body. Bathsheba, all in black, paid respect to her uncle's servant. Liddy was also standing there and shared with her madam that Fanny had a sweetheart who was a soldier. Liddy knew it was Troy, but she did not tell her boss and just cried. Bathsheba saw that the coffin had Fanny Robin and her child written on it. Out of curiosity, she opened the coffin after Liddy left. Bathsheba was extremely surprised as she saw a baby beside Fanny. She was terrified and walked backward. Sergeant Troy came in and was in tears after seeing a coffin. Bathsheba tried to stop him, but Troy managed to get near. He was in grief as he saw the love of his life, Fanny Robin, and their child lying inside the coffin. He kissed them, and Bathsheba was not okay with kissing another woman before her. With that, Sergeant Troy told the lady that Fanny Robin meant more to him than her, even if she was already dead. He added that his wife can never replace her and that Bathsheba is nothing to him now. Bathsheba cried and walked away in tears after hearing that. On the day of the burial, Sergeant Troy went to the sea, removed his uniform, and swam to the deepest portion. Hearing that her husband was drowned, she opened Troy's belonging. Even if he fooled Bathsheba, the lady was still in grief after losing him. The following day, Mr. Boldwood visited Gabriel. He expressed his admiration for the shepherd for managing Bathsheba's farm well. With that, he offered to work on his farm, where he would receive a percentage of its income. Gabriel declined and told the bachelor that Ms. Everdeen needed him the most. Mr. Boldwood replied and assured the man that he would get permission from the lady before he made a move. Mr. Boldwood also brought Gabriel's dog from Nakram Hill, where he previously worked. Gabriel was so happy and played with his dog. Bathsheba already knew about Mr. Boldwood offering a job to Gabriel to take care of his farm. The loyal servant Gabriel told the lady he would not transfer there without her permission. Bathsheba owes so much to Gabriel that she doesn't force him to stay with her. She believes that Gabriel deserves more opportunities that she can't give to him. 
With that, Gabrielle left Ms. Everdeen. Mr. Boldwood also visited Bathsheba and consoled her for her loss. There, he expressed his intention to pay the soldier's debt due to gambling. Bathsheba declined and told the bachelor that she didn't want money. Mr. Boldwood insisted and told the lady that he was not just willing to pay the debt but also willing to provide for the financial stability of her farm, and more than anything else, he was willing to be Bathsheba's husband. The lady is still unsure about what she felt about Mr. Boldwood. The bachelor insists that he won't mind if the lady married him without desire, but out of guilt and pity, she feels towards him. He also gave the lady enough time to think and had an agreement that he'll wait for her decision by Christmas, like what the lady promised. Bathsheba opened this to Gabrielle and told the man that she was hesitant, because love for her became a sad thing. Gabrielle replied and got curious why Bathsheba was asking him different things about love. Bathsheba told the man that she sees him as objective and indifferent. Very different from the previous Bathsheba, who never even gave a chance to the poor man to marry her. Gabrielle, on the other hand, responded that she was asking the wrong man. Bathsheba was teary and just greeted goodnight to Gabrielle before she left. Winter came, and the men were all busy cutting pine trees to be decorated for Christmas. Bathsheba attended a mass where Gabrielle and Mr. Boldwood were also there. Mr. Boldwood noticed that Bathsheba's thoughts were not composed, since she was blankly staring at the chair. However, he just set aside that thinking that Christmas is fast approaching, when the lady will decide to decline his proposal or marry him. Hours before Christmas Eve, Mr. Boldwood and his workers, together with Gabrielle, were all busy decorating his home for the party later. The bachelor also invited Gabrielle to attend the event. Mr. Boldwood felt mixed emotions at that moment. He was happy but also trembling because he felt nervous about Bathsheba's decision. The bachelor also asked Gabriel his advice on what tie will he wear later. The man only replied to Mr. Boldman that he was asking the wrong man. The bachelor smiled and continued asking Gabriel if Bathsheba would keep her promise. Gabriel, for the second time, responded that he was asking the wrong man. With that, Mr. Boldwood showed the ring he would give to Bathsheba once she accepted his proposal. The middle-aged man also went serious and told Gabriel he knew his secret. How he takes care of Bathsheba, and her farm made him conclude that he loves her so much. He also told Gabriel that Bathsheba deeply loves him based on her actions. Regardless, Mr. Boldwood is hopeful that Bathsheba will marry him. Gabriel, on the other hand, told the bachelor that he would try to make time to attend the party. At the farm, a familiar face showed up in Bathsheba's room. It was Sergeant Troy, her husband. He is still alive and was mysteriously planning something. Meanwhile, at Mr. Boldwood's mansion, Bathsheba arrives, and the middle-aged man smiles at the lady. The party is so elegant and joyous, but Bathsheba is lonely, sitting in a chair while observing Gabrielle mingling with other ladies. Gabrielle went near to Bathsheba to greet her. Bathsheba jokingly told the man that he'll make those ladies upset for leaving them. The silence was heard after where Gabrielle and Bathsheba felt awkward. The music ended, and everyone on the dance floor clapped. Mr. Boldwood interrupted the two. Knowing the bachelor's plan, Gabrielle asked permission to leave the event. Mr. Boldwood stopped him and told the man that he better dance with Bathsheba first before leaving. Bathsheba agreed, and Gabrielle held her hand to dance. Romantic music filled the room. Bathsheba told Gabrielle to tell her what to do. She was teary eyes as he was waiting for the man to respond. Gabrielle, on the other hand, told the lady to do what was right. Bathsheba excuses herself after that, leaving Gabrielle on the dance floor. Without their knowledge, Mr. Boldwood was just observing them from afar. Bathsheba went outside of the house, feeling pressured. There she saw Sergeant Troy is alive and walking towards her. He is wearing his uniform and carrying a sword. Bathsheba couldn't believe it and shed a tear. Some fishermen found him and brought him to the shore. But just as he planned to return, he heard everyone think he was already dead. He liked the thought of that and decided to stay that way. Bathsheba asked why he came back. The soldier responded that he missed her so much, so he returned. Troy asked the lady why she was not happy to see him. Bathsheba recalled when he told her that she was nothing to him. Sergeant Troy denied it. He made the lady feel guilty by saying that he gave up his job as a soldier for her, so he was not wrong for asking for some money before. Bathsheba told the man that she didn't have money left. Hearing that, the soldier told the lady to sell her farm to make money. Meanwhile, at the party, Mr. Boldwood was bothered when Bathsheba went out of his house alone in the middle of the night. Sergeant Troy forced Bathsheba to return home with him. But the lady just cried. Angry, the soldier pulled the lady's arm heading home. A shot was heard. Mr. Boldwood eliminated Sergeant Troy. Bathsheba looked at Troy and was terrified to see him dead. After the incident, Mr. Boldwood was imprisoned for his deed. Days passed, and Bathsheba harvested her crops, way higher than her harvest in the past five years. Seeing that the farm was successful, Gabriel told Bathsheba that he'd be leaving for America the next day. Bathsheba agreed and said the man he deserved the best. The next day, Gabriel left home while Bathsheba sat on her bed, feeling bothered. Liddy noticed the sadness in her madam's eyes. She pretends to be busy at her table with her papers. Gabriel's dog was just next to her. Its eyes were also in grief, softly barking Bathsheba. The lady saw the dog's lonely eyes. There, she immediately went out on her horse. She planned to search for Gabriel. She found him. She offered him money, a farm partnership, or anything that would stop him from leaving. 
Gabriel replied and told the lady that he didn't need those anymore. He also added that he had already told her he would go one day. Bathsheba tried to stop Gabriel for the second time, but the man insisted on leaving and motivated the lady that it was now time to fight her own battles. Even if it hurts her so much, Bathsheba bid her goodbye and expressed gratitude to Gabriel for not leaving her side. She also asked the man if she was his first love. Gabriel didn't respond. There, Bathsheba accepted that she would be going alone without him. Suddenly, Gabriel told the lady that if he just knew, that Bathsheba would let him marry and love her one day. Bathsheba interrupted and jokingly told the man that he would never know because he never asked. Bathsheba invited Gabriel to ask her again. Gabriel never believed what he heard. He has always been afraid of being rejected by her again. Gabriel cried in happiness and grabbed the chance to kiss the woman he loved. The two passionately kissed and headed to the farm. Too late, may it be for Bathsheba to love back Gabriel, but it doesn't matter to him. All he wants is to get the hand of the woman he loves in good and bad times. The love that Bathsheba has been expecting from other men that only Gabriel himself can wholeheartedly offer.